Some people adapt to the way they live because of survival instinct. It's a demonstration of the dynamic relationship that humans develop with their surrounding environment and the way in which people adapt and shape their environment according to their own needs. Humans by nature are as resilient and flexible as they can get when it comes to adapting to living in strange places. Just ask the people in these unique locations. From mountaintops to cave dwellings to remote islands, 20 strangest places where people actually live. Santa Cruz del Islote Approximately 600 people live in this two and a half acre area, making Santa Cruz del Islote one of the world's most densely populated places. And even more remarkably, everyone on the island is related. There are no non-native residents living in the island's approximately 100 homes, where 10 under one roof is not uncommon. Residents have just six different surnames, a testament to how they're all related to each other by blood or marriage. More than a century ago, fishermen were said to have built the island on a coral platform before settling there, content with its beautiful location and lack of mosquitoes. Over the years, the families of the original inhabitants grew, and most never left, citing its palpable community spirit and laid-back way of life. Named for the white cross in a small square, Santa Cruz means Holy Cross. The island packs a church, school, shops, and one restaurant into its winding streets and narrow alleys, where children play tag and adults share home-cooked meals and dance to champata music. Homes painted lime green, banana yellow, and sky blue are passed down through generations. Cooper Petty Underground Town Cooper Petty is at the center of Australia's opal mining industry. Now, 60% of its residents live underground, and the town is becoming a leader in sustainable living. However, nothing about the Australian town of Cooper Petty is for the faint of heart. It's blisteringly hot, located in the country's remote outback interior, and is usually covered in a thin veil of red dust from local opal mines. But rather than move to a cooler, more hospitable climate, residents have gotten creative building a subterranean community in old mines and creating everything from dugout homes to churches. What began in 1916 as perhaps the largest opal mining operation in the world has since expanded into a subterranean community. About a hundred years ago, a teenager discovered a piece of opal in the area. From there, miners flocked to the region and soon enough, the town of Cooper Petty, the world's largest source for opals, was born. In its heyday in the 70s and 80s, the town was home to more than 1,000 miners. Today, there are only about 100. Lately, though, the underground town has been attracting attention for a new reason, its hybrid energy project. Harnessing the area's sunny, windy weather, Cooper Petty's renewable energy plant generates 70% of the energy needed to power the town. Ocean Grove, Tent City, New Jersey Ocean Grove is a charming New Jersey shore town where recreation, history, and religion all prosper in what's referred to as God's Square Mile. The town is steep in religious tradition and welcomes visitors who seek to enjoy quiet summer evenings and peaceful strolls along the boardwalk without the 21st century noisy attractions found in other beach destinations. This Jersey shore town is unique with its charming tree-lined village, Victorian bed and breakfast inns, a beach with a rustic boardwalk, and a large, attractive, historic wooden auditorium. The town has maintained its communal and religious ties with the original Methodist camp meeting ground. It's a dry town with a ban on alcohol and restricted use of the beach on Sundays until the afternoon. The wooden boardwalk along the beach has maintained its natural beauty with no commercial amusements or concession stands. Today, over 100 tents remain to the north of the great auditorium. The tents are made with canvas with a striped canvas-covered porch, a plain canvas-covered sleeping and living area in the front. It has a wooden shed behind the tent that contains the kitchen, bath, and dining area. The size of the tents, including the rear wooden structure, is a little over 300 square feet. Whittier, Alaska Whittier is a city at the head of the Passage Canal in the U.S. state of Alaska, about 58 miles southeast of Anchorage. The story of Whittier began after World War II when the U.S. military was looking for a place to build a secret military facility. Whittier fulfilled three requirements, access to an ice-free deep water port, natural protection against air attacks, 
and a topography that was radar unfriendly. The town adopted the name of Whittier at the end of the war in honor of the 19th century American poet John Greenleaf Whittier. With a population of 272 at the 2020 census, the city is notable for the fact that almost all of its residents live in the Beejich Towers condominium, earning it the nickname of a town under one roof. Residents don't even have to leave the building they live in if they don't want to. That's because Whittier, including its hospital, school, and city government, functions within one self-sufficient structure. There's also a church, a grocery store, laundry, a small hotel, a conference room, and a play area with an indoor pool within the complex. The 14-story Beejich Towers Incorporated, known around these parts simply as BTI, soars skyward, interrupting the surrounding landscape. Many residents who live here own t-shirts that say, POW, Prisoner of Whittier, Hallstatt, China. Hallstatt is a housing development in China modeled after the small town of Hallstatt in Austria, a World Heritage Site. Austria's Hallstatt has a rich history dating back hundreds of years, which can be seen in the historic UNESCO protected architecture that makes up the small town. However, China's Hallstatt only dates back to 2012, but looks almost just as ancient. The lovely little town was copied by a company that recreated some of the homes, decorations, and even the central church building as part of a novelty housing development for the wealthy who assumedly could not get real estates in the real Hallstatt. While the entire village has not been replicated yet, construction on the site continues and one day soon visitors may find themselves a bit turned around as to whether they're in China or Europe. It's the next evolution of the Chinese trend of replicating landmarks from other places in the world. From scale replicas of the Sphinx and the Eiffel Tower to the navigable Venetian canals, China has an ever-growing number of knockoff wonders and the recreation of an entire village is simply the grandest yet. Hallstatt looks like the picture-perfect postcard image of a traditional European town. Now this lovely view can only be found in China, where an exact replica of the village has been built as a high-end housing development. Maharishi Vedic City, Iowa Maharishi Vedic City is a city in Jefferson County, Iowa in the United States. The city plan and buildings are based on an ancient system of architecture and design, revived by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Its goals are to protect, nourish, and satisfy everyone, upholding the different social, cultural, and religious traditions while maintaining the integrity and progress of the city as a whole. The city is just over one square mile in size, made up of a ring of ten circles in which all the structures face east due to the rising sun. The buildings are designed with precise proportions so that the rooms are situated according to the movement of the sun. In town is also the Vedic Observatory, made up of 10 astrological and astronomical instruments based on ancient designs, arranged in a circle to align with the sun, moon, and stars. Like the rest of the Vedic architecture, it's designed to promote inner happiness and balance and align oneself with the cosmos. Since its inception, daily life in this unusual American town has revolved around transcendental meditation which Marahashi believed was the ultimate meditative practice for finding world peace. Meditation is performed twice a day, just as large as its commitment to meditation is the town's devotion to being at one with the earth. Seteno de las Bodegas This small town in Spain has a distinctive setting along a narrow river gorge. The town extends along the course of the Rio Trejo, with some houses being built into the rocks wall of the gorge itself, created by enlarging natural caves or overhangs and adding an external wall. This beautiful town is nestled deep within a canyon, surrounded by fields of olive trees. However, its most impressive feature is the huge rocks that overhang the pretty white houses. Wander among the narrow streets where you'll find houses emerging from boulders and delicious cave restaurants. In prehistoric times, it was believed troglodytes, cave dwellers, lived within the caves in this village. In more modern days, the villagers built houses in the spaces between the rocks, preventing them from getting too hot in the summer and too cold in the winter. Sedno has a famous reputation for its meat products, particularly chorizo sausage from pigs bred in the surrounding hills. As well as meat, it has a reputation for producing fine pastries, 
and its bars and restaurants are among the best in the region. Bodegas means wineries in Spain, and it got its name from a once thriving wine trade. The wineries are far fewer these days, but all this history and beauty make it one of the most popular towns to visit. Heathorn, the Netherlands. Heathorn, about a 90 minute drive from Amsterdam in the Netherlands, is an idyllic village where countless thatched farms have been built on small peat islands connected by over 170 small wooden bridges. You can see how the Dutch love to live with and on the water. In an environment full of lakes, reed beds and forests lie this picturesque village. Heathorn was established as a settlement of peat harvesters. Peat cutting created ponds and lakes, and people built houses on the island between them. As a result, access was only possible by bridge or using traditional heat horn boats, so-called punters. Narrow boats pushed along using a long pole. Fortunately, little has changed here. The tall wooden bridges are still there, and you can still travel the waters on a punter as well as on an electric boat or a tour boat. Heat horn is called the Dutch Venice for good reason. It has more than 55 miles of canoe trails that connect the canal side homes eateries, hotels, and museums in the town center. A small town of about 2,600 people, this town's serene canals and thatched cottages have earned it worldwide fame. As many as 200,000 tourists visit each year, outnumbering locals 75 to 1. Since cars have to stay parked outside of town, visitors here often rent a canoe or motorbike to explore the sights. Chong Nia's Floating Village the water levels rise and fall so dramatically each year here that it's no wonder that they built a floating village to follow the water. The famous floating village of Chong Nias in Cambodia. It's situated on the largest lake in Southeast Asia and is unique because the direction of the water flow changes twice a year. Tour operators here are not travel agents or stalls with various brochures, but rather just a person with a motorized tricycle that has a keen local knowledge and will be your own personal tour guide for as many days as requested. Depending on your bargaining skills, the prices may vary from 30 US dollars to 50 dollars a day. Expect to see houses, schools, and even churches all built on barge-like bases anchored at various points along your tour. These floating barges are not stagnant. Many are moving at any one time, vying for a better position along the banks. Chong Nias is very scenic in the warm light of late afternoon and can be combined with a sunset from the nearby hilltop temple of Nom Krom. One of the best ways to visit the floating village of Chong Nias is to hook up with the Tara boat, which offers all-inclusive trips with a meal aboard its converted cargo boat. Prices include transfers, entry fees, local boats, a tour guide, and a two-course meal. The Tunnels of Bucharest Bucharest, the capital of Romania, is like any other town. The only thing different about this town is what lies underneath. See, in the sewers, there's another community. A community of adults and children who have no other choice but to live in the sewers in order to have some type of shelter. In 1989, the communist regime was overthrown, and Romanian orphanages closed their doors condemning thousands of kids to life on the streets. In the winter, the temperature frequently lingers around freezing and the snow flurries that blanket the markets and marble arches with the postcard shimmer of Christmas render the streets dangerously cold for those without homes. Thus, the children who had to fend for themselves in the 1990s took solace underground. In making the move, a community was born, albeit from dire circumstances, but a community nonetheless. Beneath the opulent grandeur of the bold and upstanding Bucharest is a society that dwells underground. No running water, no soft beds, barely any space to move and stretch out. It's no place for someone to live. However, the community goes back generations now so that most of the sewer people know each other and look out for one another. Thus, many people will spend their entire lives underground. Freedom Cove, Canada. No day is typical at Freedom Cove, Certain regular chores have to be done, feeding the dogs, cleaning the house, doing laundry. For Wayne Adams and Catherine King, two artists who live on a sustainable floating compound, that's where the similarities end. They live in a hand-built floating compound near Tofino, British Columbia. The compound currently consists of a bright magenta and turquoise home space, formerly a fish farm, a lighthouse, four greenhouses, 
an art space, and a dance studio. They built their property, called Freedom Cove, out of salvaged materials collected over the years. The couple had long used the natural world as inspiration for their art pieces. So, when they met in 1987, they immediately realized a shared love of the outdoors and hatched plans to build their own dream home in the wild one day. Our entire floating island is an installation art piece that transforms in some way every year," said Adams, who has incorporated over 240,000 pieces of recycled and found materials into Freedom Cove. The couple built the whole floating structure to withstand hurricane force winds. The system is tied to shore with large ropes that allow the entire island home to move as one. They used flotation technology that's been recycled from fish farms nearby. Ellie Day Island Many theories have swirled around this small building dubbed the world's loneliest house on a remote plot of land to the south of Iceland. Being the only building on the deserted island, it's attracted several myths. According to one theory, the house was built by a billionaire who planned to move to the remote island in the event of a zombie apocalypse. Other people suggested a religious hermit may be living there. Another popular theory, which was later debunked, said that the Icelandic government had gifted the island to singer Björk. Some even claim the house did not exist, but it had been photoshopped before the pictures were published online. In reality, the house was built in the 1930s by five families that permanently lived on the island, surviving by hunting birds and fishing. Not much information is known about the families that lived there in the 20th century, but surely they didn't like to interact with outsiders. But by the 1930s, the last residents left the island. The entire island is about 110 acres, and the only wildlife it houses is a Nordic type of bird named Puffin, which is quite a delicacy. That's why in the 1990s, the empty house was adopted by local Puffin hunters, where they would only stay a few days until the hunt was over, sort of converting the house into a hunting lodge. Lake Bled Slovenia is a stunning little country nestled between Austria and Croatia. It's known as one of the most stunning countries in Europe and a favorite destination for hiking and for exploring the stunning Alps of Slovenia. Lake Bled is a lake in the Julian Alps in northwestern Slovenia where it adjoins the town of Bled. The lake lies in a picturesque environment surrounded by mountains and forests. It's Bled Island that first catches people's attention as they gave over Lake Bled. The religious history on the island long predates the current church. Long before the church was built on the island, it was home to a temple dedicated to a pagan goddess of life and fertility. But after the Slavic peoples in the region became Christian around 745, the temple was replaced. For centuries, Europeans have flocked to the shores of Lake Bled. Emperor Henry II, ruler of the Holy Roman Empire, enjoyed the lake so much that he built Bled Castle in 1004 to confer it as an estate. The church was rebuilt in 1465, and the current church dates from the mid-17th century. The bells continue to ring out their melody to this day. One look at Lake Bled and the breathtaking Julian Alps sums it all up. If one hasn't put this real-life scene straight out of a fairy tale on one's bucket list for Europe, then one most certainly should. Cliff Village this village in Sichuan province drew worldwide fame in 2016 after images emerged of the residents climbing perilous rattan ladders, some hundreds of years old, up the cliffside to reach their homes. The two-hour climb was the village's only way to access the outside world, and they had to carry farm produce down the cliff to sell at the nearest market miles away. In recent years, local authorities replaced their handmade ladders with steel ones that featured handrails drastically shortening their travel time. It's become a tourist attraction in recent years. Further development will serve the tourism industry, with officials planning to build a cable car to carry tourists up and down the cliff. Under the guidance of poverty relief officials, more and more people here have opened restaurants and shops. Back in 2020, all 84 households of the village were relocated to new houses at a resettlement site down the cliff. After being relocated, Many villagers have turned their old adobe houses into hotels. Though these developments are likely to bring more jobs to the area, it's not clear what safeguards are in place to make sure that the site's ecological areas are protected and not at risk of being overdeveloped. Drina River House Located in the middle of the Drina River, 
In Serbia lies a lonely little house perched on the spike of a rock surrounded by water on the edge of the beautiful natural landscape of the Tara National Park. It's become famous all over the world. For the creation of this memorable house, all credit goes to the river, a blazing summer sun, and a group of young boys. It all began on a hot summer's day in 1968 when a group of friends sought refuge from the relentless waves of the swollen Drina on a nearby rock. Exhausted from swimming and fighting the mighty river, they laid down on the lonely rock and enjoyed the sun. After a while, they realized that the rock surface and jagged edges of the rock weren't exactly the comfiest place, so they decided to swim back to the shore and bring a few wooden boards on, which they would continue to rest. When there had been enough boards for lying on, they started to arrange some of them vertically to shelter themselves from the sun. And thus, an idea was born. However, the river's unpredictable flow washed away six of these houses. Nevertheless, the desire for this river symbol, and both man and nature's masterpiece, to survive prevailed. This is why a new and sturdier house was built each time the river decided to take its predecessor, Santuario Madonna de la Corona. Built over 2,000 feet above sea level into a vertical cliff face on Italy's Mount Baldo, the Santuario Madonna de la Corona, the sanctuary of the Lady of the Crown, looks as though it's nearly suspended in midair. The church does not actually hang on the sheer face, but instead sits on a thin rock shelf that can only be reached by a thin path from below and a street from above. The church was built in 1530 and the site became a chapel for anyone wanting to pay pilgrimage and contemplate in peace. The main chapel saw a number of changes over the ensuing centuries growing larger and at one point having a larger church built over the existing one. Thanks to its relative inaccessibility, the church was never totally destroyed or desecrated and managed to survive into the 20th century, crumbling a bit but intact. In the 1970s, an Italian architect tore down much of the aging structure and built it back up, taking care to retain as many important artistic flourishes as possible. Today, the once treacherous mountain path to the chapel has been modernized and the remarkable church is still a popular pilgrimage site for visitors. It brings you closer to the people of this land, their history, their traditions and beliefs. Above all, it's a testament to their spirit as building and maintaining a sanctuary halfway up a steep cliff face is a sign of devotion that nowadays we rarely see. Mount Fanjing Check out this jaw-dropping pinnacle stretching hundreds of feet above the valley floor. But if you look closely, you'll see the mountain is not merely a natural wonder. It also features a pair of ancient Chinese temples atop its peak. Located in China, Fanjing is the highest peak of the Wuling Mountains, stretching 8,430 feet above sea level. To reach the top, visitors have to walk up more than 8,000 steps or take a cable car ride up from the road below. The two temples atop the mountain were each constructed on separate peaks, and guests must cross a small bridge to traverse the crevice between them. There are a few more dramatic ways to reach a historic Buddhist temple than by crossing a mountain bridge in the clouds. Buddhism first came to the region in 639, during the Tang Dynasty, and the temples were likely constructed sometime after that. The temples were partially destroyed in the late 1500s during a rebellion when members of the Mayo ethnic group rose up against the Ming Dynasty and looted various sacred sites, but they've since been restored. After centuries of history, Mount Fanjing stands today as one of the most dramatically placed temples in China, a monument to Buddhism that will leave you breathless especially if you make the 8,000-step ascent there. Matmata, Tunisia Every Star Wars fan worth their salt knows a little about the location of Luke Skywalker's house. Not Tatooine, but the actual filming location in Tunisia. Or, to be more precise, the Hotel City Driss in Matmata was chosen as the set for Luke's family home thanks to its otherworldly underground construction. The small town has made its way into the hearts of travelers for decades because of its otherworldly underground homes. Similar structures dot the landscape around Matmata, a pitted land of palm trees and olive groves. The houses themselves are built by first digging a deep circular pit into the sandstone, which is soft enough to work with simple hand tools. Caves are then dug out around the edges of the pit, forming the underground rooms and leaving the main pit as a courtyard. Once finished, 
The construction offers a fine escape from the heat of the day and a sturdy home that could survive for many years. Visiting an underground home in Matmata is an amazing experience. The entrance is on the side of a small hill, so it feels like stepping into a cave. It's not known when nomadic tribes decided to settle here in their underground houses, and the entire area was largely unknown to the outside world until the 1960s. Villa Girasole The Villa Girasole, meaning the sunflower in Italian, is a house constructed in the 1930s in northern Italy. The villa rotates to follow the sun as it moves, just as a sunflower opens up and turns to follow the sun as well. A wealthy Italian engineer dreamed of building a house that would maximize the health properties of the sun by rotating to follow it. He first began drawing designs for his rotating house in 1929, but construction started in 1931. At first, the designer only expected the house to make a 180-degree turn, but eventually, after he saw it make the turn, he decided to make the complete turn of 360 degrees. The project was completed in 1935, after four years. It has two stories and is shaped like the letter L. It sits on a circular base with a 147-foot tall tower at the center. This is where the house rotates from, using motors. The L rotates over three circular tracks where 15 trolleys can slide the building and it takes 9 hours and 20 minutes to rotate fully. The first floor of the moving part is known as the day zone and includes the dining room, the music room, studies with the kitchen, pantry, and toilet located right near the central tower. An assortment of bedrooms and bathrooms are found on the second floor. The Heiss Hotel, Sweden This hotel in northern Sweden is rebuilt each year with snow and ice and is the world's first ice hotel. The hotel, including the chairs and beds, is constructed from snow and ice blocks taken from the nearby Torn River. Each year, artists submit their ideas for suites, and a jury selects about 50 artists to create the church, ice bar, reception, main hall, and suites. Even the glasses in the bar are made of ice. Each suite is unique, and the architecture of the hotel is changed each year as it's rebuilt from scratch. You can stay in rooms made of ice blocks with platform beds, thermal sleeping bags, and reindeer hides. Each spring around March, the hotel builders harvest tons of ice from the frozen river and store it in a nearby production hall with room for over 900 tons of ice and 27,000 tons of snow. The Ice Hotel is known to be the biggest hotel of ice and snow in the world, spanning over 64,600 feet. When spring comes, everything melts away and returns to the river. But still, it has guests from many countries and it's reported that over 1 million guests have visited since its creation. Other amenities include a refined restaurant, a cozy lounge, and an ice bar. Guided tours are available, and there are plenty of adventurous activities to fill your days. Be sure to enjoy a glass of champagne in an ice glass or cocktails in the bar afterwards. If home is where the heart is, these people prove that there's a lot to love in regards to their unique locations and even more so their chosen dwellings. Now, show us some love. Like and subscribe to the channel and be the first to check out more amazing videos. Mm -hmm.